today I'm going to be giving you guys 10 tips to go from a noob to a pro in Theme Park Tycoon 2. Now these are some really useful tips that I wish I knew when I started playing Theme Park Tycoon 2. And there's a couple right here that you've probably never even thought of. Before we do get into that though guys, why not hit subscribe? That would really help me out. But except from that, let's get straight into the first tip. So first up, here's some tips on how to make your buildings look a lot better. Now, what a lot of people do very wrong is they accidentally build their buildings extremely square. And they end up with something like this, where it's just an exact square. Which, you know, doesn't look so great. It's quite boring and it's really hard to decorate without it just looking crap. Which is why what you should be trying to do is add on bits to it and do something other than just a square. So, for example, this building over here, you can see there are multiple different rectangles and circles that have been placed inside of each other. So we have the exact same thing right here. This is the red part right here And then we have actually added on this little bay window right here We've added on this side bit And even a chimney over here And it's just stuff like this that makes your builds look a lot more interesting Just try out some different shapes and well see what works Second I have some tips about terrain right here Now a lot of people end up doing terrain like this with just the basic editor Or even worse they end up doing terrain something like this Where it's just literally flat terrain And well let's not beat around the bush this looks terrible But you can make your terrain look a million times better by just adding in some primitives. Now, if you're a fan of Benji's Adventures, and if you're a Theme Park Titan 2 player, Rob, well, you obviously are, you'll have seen this exact same sort of terrain used in his builds. And you can see if we look at the side right here, it's basically the exact same as what we had before right here, except from I've just chucked some primitives and rocks on top. So the way to do this right here is go into your precision build mode and just set everything to no snapping, so your rotation and your actual move snapping to no snapping. And then you just want to rotate your rock in all three different ways. Place one in and then place another one on a different rotation, and if you just carry on building Building these up, you can very simply and very quickly add some nice rocks like this. And then to improve it just that little bit more, you can also turn snapping onto no snapping right here and just lower some of these rocks in as well. And there you go, that's a very small section, but you can see if you build even more of it, you'll get something like this. And another nice tip to actually spruce up your rocks right here is adding some vegetation. Now I've done this right here with just some palm trees, which I've actually just sunk into the rocks right here, as well as some little trees like this, which I again sunk into the rocks like that. Okay, but onto tip three right here, which is use curved paths. A lot of people end up just building really flat straight paths like this where it just really doesn't make much sense. I mean, of course, this right here looks a million times better than this one here. And the great thing is you can pretty easily make these curved paths right here actually work so guests can walk on them. Let me show you right here by turning this one right here into this. So first of all, to just make this a little bit more curved, we're actually just going to place this path like this. Otherwise, the guests will walk all the way up here and then across like that, which of course we don't want. Next, we're going to go into our primitives and scroll all the way along until we find this piece right here. Make sure you're going into precision build mode and then we just want to size this up using the new scale tool and once you've done that we just want to drag this along right here and line it up so something like that and then we can just bring this down and sink it to just above this path of course we can paint this right here and now it's time to cover up all this mess and to do this first of all we're actually just going to grab this right here and we're going to size it up even more so that it's just this size right here then we're going to drag it along and raise it up just a tiny bit more now we can actually paint that the color of grass which if you're wondering is this grass right here and of course this color here now to fill up this gap right here if you don't actually want guests walking on it you don't want to place a path in right there so we're going to use a primitive so grab this primitive right here and put it onto precision build mode and just lower it down into the ground place that in give it a paint and then finally we just need to cover this up right here so finally grab this primitive right here and we're just going to place this in precision build mode and of course scale this up so just scale it up to the same size right here so we have something like this line it up and then we can just lower it down into the right place and then finally let's just give that a paint and now guests will walk over this pretty nicely but anyway moving on to tip four and that is to use actual custom trees. A lot of people just use these trees right here all over the place and they don't look great. But you can really really easily make custom trees right here which looks so much better. Now to do this tree right here, all I've literally done is gotten a dead tree right here and in precision build mode I've just slightly rotated it around I've just slightly moved it a bit. Then I've placed another one in just a little bit away from that like so. Make sure you rotate it around so you have a bit of difference. And then on top of those you can just grab one of these trees right here and just sink it in. So I'm going to place one right there and then I'm just going to place another one in over here of course spun around just so that is a bit more depth and uh, well there you go you've got a custom tree easy as that of course there are some much better and more advanced custom trees right here but it's a nice you know substitute for this tree here tip number five is to decorate your stalls a lot of people just place down stalls like this and well let's be honest this isn't looking that good is it the in-game stalls are you know, kind of bad and you know they don't look great by themselves so you could decorate them by just adding some walls on or adding like a bit of scenery around them but what i've actually done right here is turned it into a 
giant Coke can. You can see I've got these Coca-Cola decals each side with these edges around it and then a straw coming out of the top. Now, of course, you can do whatever you want here, although I thought this would just be a little fun thingy to do right here and it fits quite nice. Tip number five is about your roller coasters. Now, what I see a lot of people doing is using the basic editor, especially on their chain lift. Now, it's completely fair that most people cannot use the advanced editor because they don't know how to use it as well. That's completely fine. But it is really, really simple to use the advanced editor for just a chain lift or something. Because the problem is in basic editor, you either have a really, really, really slow sloping chain lift or you have way too high of one. So what you can actually do right here is just place him like this and go into your advanced editor and then make sure that you've changed to your chain lift right here and you can just pitch this up like that. Make sure you select your chain lift right here and then you can actually just turn this up like this. And it means that you can go as steep or as shallow as you want. So I'm going to go a little bit more steep than this one right here and we're just going to go up like this. And then at the end of the chain lift, all you have to do is move this down like this and if you want a bit of a helping hand, click this snap no to grid button right here, which basically just snaps it onto the grid so when you go into your basic editor, you can just carry on like nothing's happened. Number seven is something that I see a lot of people doing wrong and that is in your queues. A lot of people just leave it like this. And I mean, look at how crap this is, honestly. It's got these weird blue lines going along it, you know, the fences. It just doesn't look very good. So what you can actually do is take off those fences and paint these lines. So let me show you how to do that on this over here. So first of all, you can actually turn the curbs and the fences off right here. And we can do that for all of them, although I'm going to leave the path curb on, I think. And then to fix these ugly blue lines right here, we can just paint them. So if we just pick the color from the appearance right here, we can just paint these to the exact same color that's the first one and it'll match nicely. And there you go. Woo. And then to replace those boring standard fences, we can actually make a custom one. I've made one right here just out of tracks, two on top of each other. And of course, there's loads and loads of ways that you can make fences in the game, although this is quite a nice kind of generic fence, I guess. Now, number eight is decorate your flat rides. I see a lot of people just placing down their flat rides, such as this drop tower right here, and just adding no decoration around it. And it's really easy and really nice to just decorate those flat rides a bit. For example, right here, I've made a custom fence with these kind of wooden planks right here, added some bushes in, and even a little operations area. Now, of course, this is not very detailed. I've not done a great job right here, but, you know, it's just for simplicity. <laughs> but you could even add something up at the top right here, like a crow's nest or, like, some bushes or something like that. And it's not just a drop tower. You can add decorations to tons of rides. A lot of people add covers over, like, carousels or teacups or stuff like that. And it just gives your rides a bit more of a vibe and fits in with the area a bit better. If you want some ideas, then check my showcases up in the top right up there. Number nine. Now, this is one of my personal favorites right here, just because the example that I've built is pretty cool. I've got to say, I'm a big fan of this one. And that is that you can actually trigger stuff through rides. So, for example, right here, I've got this waterfall that's running down over the actual track. But what I've actually done is sequence this waterfall to stop as the boat's going through. Let me show you right here. So, we set off right here, and when it hits this piece of track right here, the waterfall stops, and we can go straight through it. And then once the boat's gone through, the waterfall starts once again. And this is actually really easy to do. Not this waterfall in particular, because this has a lot of water emitters, but in general, this is quite easy to do. There we go. I've moved the water in this bit of rock right here, and you can just see all the water emitters going down. So what I've done is got a sequencer right here and just connected all these water emitters to it, as you can see. And if I click play, you can see all these water emitters stop and these smoke emitters down at the bottom. And if you want to hook this up to your ride, it's really simple as well. All you need to do is click on the piece that you want to link it up to, click on appearance and scroll down until you see this triggers on current piece. So let's just add it onto this piece right here. All we need to do is click on the piece, appearance, add, and then we can click on our sequencer. And it's really as simple as that, honestly. You can do this with TNT, water emitters, fire emitters, decals, so much. And it adds a bit more like animation and just moving stuff to your ride. And my last tip for this episode is number 10, add some more depth to your walls. You can see right here that I've got this wall using just the basic brick texture and well, it doesn't look great. What we can actually do is just make some custom bricks as you can see right here. And this is surprisingly simple to do. All you need to do is get a big fat primitive like this and add in these little bricks with another primitive. So literally just grab this primitive right here, rotate it round and just place it with gaps. So for example, you can set your custom snap into 1.0 free like this and then just drag it along like this leaving gaps and well you have a custom brick wall simple as that but that is the last tip for today's video guys i hope you have enjoyed it i hope you found this helpful if you have don't forget to leave a like and subscribe i'd really appreciate it of course here's all the members on the screen thank you guys all so much for supporting me i really do appreciate it if you'd like to become a member just click that join button down below and except from that i'll see you all in another video i hope you have a great day and goodbye